Okay, so my, my name is Mary Rose Crook. Um, I started painting in 1995. Um, as a kid, I always drew. I just kind of, um, you know, I've got books and books and books of drawings, but then when I got to high school, I just kind of stopped doing it because it didn't feel like it... I didn't feel I'd ever be good enough yeah, for it to be a career. And my family are very, very science-oriented, so um, I didn't kind of yeah, go on with it that way. Um, and then in 1995 I just decided I wanted to do it for a hobby and I thought I'd like to paint people and um, my husband Brian had been to art school so he sort of said well this is how you mix flesh colour up and I drew this really sort of you know basic little angel and um, sort of gradually painted the face and he would say oh the eyes too small or whatever and then we got it till it looked like a face and um, the next day an artist that we knew came round and I hadn't put the face away and she went who did this and I said oh no and she said you've got to keep doing this this is really good this is the first thing you've done and uh, she sent me an easel um, the next day she had a spare easel and I thought oh so I started um, my next painting which took me a year and it was just my sister and you know surrounded by sort of things that reminded me of her and it looked like an old like a book cover almost and um, then the next year I did about three well, there was a huge period for me where I was painting the dresses uh, and it was all about mourning because I, my sister had died and my father had died a couple of years earlier and then I'd had our daughter and the paintings were about all those emotional upheavals, you know, having Rosa Pearl was wonderful but it was also a huge emotional upheaval and after that my sister died quite quickly and um, so I'll be painting a painting, I have no idea what it's about but it's something that will pull me in a certain direction. Um, I'd seen a article about the morning iris and how the Victorians, um, <laughs> the Victorians were really into this flower that was really hard to grow, but it was all about mourning and Victoria mourning her husband. And I didn't know why, but I got interested in it, and I started painting them in the backgrounds of a lot of paintings. And of course, later I realised it was just because I was grieving. But at the time, I didn't click, and, and even the dresses with these big fat skirts that um, hide your actual shape. Um, I like that outward appearance of looking okay, but inside you don't know what's going on, sort of thing, and that was all to do with grieving as well. So I don't actually put things in thinking I want this to say something. Um, I, things just find their way in there into my work, and like the work that's in the um, roadshow was a classic example of that. It was that was all about Annie's death. It was um, I painted that landscape, and it was it was supposed to be called the Seaside Bag, but because the tsunami happened when I was painting it, I couldn't call it that, it felt wrong. And the seaside back was just this expression that Pliny the Younger used when he saw the, looked out at the, at the eruption and saw that the sea had been pulled away. And um, it revealed all the stuff that you wouldn't normally see and that's the way I saw the grieving process. It was revealing something that um, I hadn't seen before, you know, the emotional bones of a person. And those weird sort of glassy objects were things that just came about towards the end when I looked at them and thought, I just don't know what to put in this thing. And I just walked towards the canvas. I remember just sticking my brush in something and walking over like this, kind of going, I don't know what I'm going to do, and painting this weird thing with eyes and tentacles and calling Brian down. And he said, hmm, it's kind of red and stimpy. I think it works really well. <laughs> and so it was like, you know, amusing. And it was also sort of because I, I didn't want to go heavy, 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 you know, sadness. I wanted to just try and something funny out of myself that I couldn't quite put my finger on. It's one thing is I do research a lot of stuff, like with the morning iris, once I got interested in that, I just got all the stuff out about plants and I was reading all these things and I'd find, sometimes I'd just find a word that appealed to me, you know, and it would just make me think and, I mean the white, pink and white terraces I've read and gone through so much literature on them, I've read eyewitness accounts of the eruption, and, you know, it's just sort of, um, all of that helps, at the time it might not really turn into anything and then later on down the track you'll paint something or write a song and you'll think that's where that came from, it was um, directly related to that. Like art residencies, I don't know if um, people watching this will know, but um, an art residency is something where you are sometimes paid but often you are given um, a place to stay where you can create art and um, it will usually be followed by an exhibition of the work that you created while you were there. And I've done quite a few of them, and that's what's helped move us from a hobby to, to actually earning a living. We went to Invercargill for six months, and they paid I got a wage yeah, on top of um, them paying for all our living costs. So it meant that I had to make some art, and that was all we needed to live on. And so I didn't have to think too hard about money that year. And I d I've done a couple here at Rangiruru and um, at the Arts Centre. Yeah, and now we're off to Beijing to do one there. And that was another one. I mean, I've applied for. 10 residencies internationally and not got any of them 
and um, you usually have to wait up to six to eight months to find out and this one I sent away two photos and within 45 minutes I was accepted. The guy didn't even get me to apply. He's Australian. <laughs> he lives in China and he's very casual but I mean it just makes you realise that they're all different and it's worth keeping at it, keeping on trying because one day you'll hit somebody that will, whatever you're doing will strike a chord with them.